Galway the cat arrived in Dave and Morley's life, as you might remember, courtesy of Dave's sister, Annie. Annie left Galway with Dave when she returned to Nova Scotia after she had lived in and around Boston for almost a decade. The cat, lean and beige, arrived with an ominous warning. I don't like to say this out loud, warned Annie, but whenever the cat's around, things seem to go wrong. Annie had named the cat Galway after the American poet Galway Cannell, a gesture of affection for the poet's work. It didn't take long, however, for Dave to recognize that the cat, whether by coincidence or some quirk of destiny, had a poet's sensibility. Being shy to the point of mutinous and failing in any real sense to make connections in her new family, she terrorized Arthur the dog, picked on Dave, and largely ignored Morley and Stephanie. Only Sam, then nine, now ten years old, seemed able to meet Galway on equal ground. Galway had been living with Dave and Morley for maybe two years before she began to overgroom. <laughs> Dave isn't sure when it began. It was two years ago in the middle of the winter when he first noticed she had licked the hair off both of her front paws. It was not long after when he noticed there were also bald spots on her hind legs. The vet suggested the sleepers. Those little one-piece pajamas, he said, the ones you put babies in. <laughs> with the snaps. You, you cut out the legs and, and, and a bit at the back, you know, so... D Dave said, you're kidding. <laughs> the vet said it'll stop her licking. Sam thought Galway looked cute in the pajamas. She looks like a monkey, he said. <laughs> I've always wanted a monkey. <laughs> Galway thought otherwise and disappeared. She was somewhere in the house. She emptied her food dish during the night, and you could sense her shadowy presence, but no one saw her. It makes you wonder, said Dave, if there are other animals moving around the house you never see. <laughs> Galway reappeared abruptly after a week. One evening while Dave was watching television, he had the uneasy sense that someone was watching him. And when he looked up, there was Galway in her jammies, <laughs> sitting on top of the bookshelves, staring at him with disdain. She was still around the next morning, but she didn't acknowledge anyone. And she started grooming again. She started with the little balls on Stephanie's bedspread. In two days, Galway licked Stephanie's bedspread flat. <laughs> then Morley got up in the middle of the night and went to the bathroom and caught Galway grooming her toothbrush. <laughs> she didn't do that again. Instead, she moved on to Arthur, the dog. One afternoon, Dave came home and found Arthur splayed out on the floor with Galway perched on his back, grooming his ear. Arthur usually bounds to the front door whenever anyone comes up the walk. This time, he, Arthur looked up at Dave self-consciously, but instead of getting up to greet him, he sighed contentedly and dropped his head back to the floor. <laughs> I don't think she's necessarily crazy, said Dave. Maybe not even neurotic. I think she's bored. I think she needs a challenge. And that's when Dave decided to toilet train the cat. <laughs> If, I, if I'm going to take the time to teach her things, they might as well be useful things, he said. <laughs> and anyways, it's a skill that seems to dovetail with her interests. D Dave had seen something on television about a cat who could use a toilet. Actually, what he had seen on television was a, a promo for an item about a toilet-trained cat. He hadn't seen the item itself. But he saw the cat sitting on the toilet, and he thought it couldn't be too hard to figure out how to do it. Like teaching any animal a new trick the most important part would be to move slowly. The most important part would be patience. Dave decided he'd begin by moving Galway's litter box out of the kitchen and into the bathroom. He decided he'd do it in stages so he wouldn't upset her. He started by moving the box from the corner of the kitchen out into the hall. He set it at the bottom of the hall stairs. At dinner time, Galway wandered through the hall, stopped abruptly and stared at the litter box for a full minute and then slowly and deliberately walked into the kitchen and dumped on the floor where her box belonged. <laughs> Staring deliberately at Dave while she did it. 
I was moving too fast, said Dave. I tried to take her too far, too fast. He brought the litter box back into the kitchen and placed it a couple of feet away from its original position in the corner. It took him two months to coax the box and Galway out of the kitchen, through the hall, up the stairs, and into the upstairs bathroom. By April, Galway was doing her business in the cardboard litter box in the bathroom right outside Dave and Morley's bedroom. The next step was lifting the box from the floor to the top of the toilet. If he could get Galway to use the box while it was perched on the toilet, Dave figured it would be nothing to cut a hole in the bottom and eventually get rid of it altogether. No more kitty litter, said Dave. This is actually going to work. He believed that. <laughs> Not wanting to repeat his early mistake, Dave decided he'd move the box up to the level of the toilet seat by imperceptible degrees. Once he got it to the right level, he could slide it over and onto the toilet. He chose May the 1st for the beginning of the ascent. <laughs> on May the 1st, he balanced the litter box on a couple of books and waited to see what would happen. What happened was Galway looked at her litter box and then dumped in the bathtub. <laughs> you, you have to expect setbacks, said Dave, the optimist. Not in my bathtub, I don't, said Morley. <laughs> But Dave kept at it. By mid-June, Galway had stopped grooming. By the end of the month, most of her hair had grown back. And to everyone's surprise, she was jumping, albeit resentfully, into her litter box, which by then Dave had perched on a stack of books beside the toilet at seat height. We're almost there, he said one night. First of June, I'm going to tie the box onto the seat. I didn't really believe we'd get this far. He sounded like a figure skating coach. When July began, Dave had the box resting on the toilet seat with a hole cut in the middle and to